Hi everybody, Jeff Holiday here. Today we're going to be talking about Black Salve, aka Bloodroot Salve. And before we get underway, I want to say really, really quickly that there's just kind of a warning in this video. Uh, the pictures that you're going to see are disgusting. They are really gross absolutely nasty nasty things if you cannot handle seeing people with disfigured faces or gross uh, holes that they've burned into their own bodies i highly suggest you stop watching this video there's only so much that youtube is going to let me get away with uh for showing and for anything that i can't put on here i will also be linking in the description so just fair warning this this video is not going to be pleasant. So what exactly is this we're talking about? What we're talking about is a type of alternative cancer or skin condition treatment that is under the classification of escherotics. And escherotics are basically topically applied uh, chemicals that cause a very, very violent reaction with flesh and leave behind escars or these really, really black gnarly nasty scars. Now not all escherotics have bloodroot in them. Bloodroot is used because it produces sanguinarius which is one of the chemicals that creates escars and some of the other uh, commonly topically applied chemicals is zinc chloride. The reason why these things are used is because their reaction to living flesh is to attack and destroy it. These substances literally only exist to simply destroy flesh. That's it. That's the only reason that they exist. And traditionally in the past, in alternative woo-woo witch doctor medicine, effectively, these would be used to try and treat basic skin conditions that just needed to be kind of worn away. And you can make the case that back in the day that was an effective treatment, but compared to what we have today, it's wildly inappropriate. It's inappropriate because it's hard to control exactly how much of what kind of substance you're getting and what you're applying to your skin. And as you're literally burning a hole into your body, being able to monitor it and having the, the, the medical knowledge of when you should stop, that kind of gets lost by the wayside. So why make a video about this? Well, uh, recently there's been some articles coming out about people who are burying holes in their faces and like losing their noses or whatever. But I've known I've been wanting to talk about it for a while because pseudoscience and bullshit like this is my creme de la creme, the kind of shit that I love to debunk. And I have been a member in a Facebook group all about Bloodroot, which has almost 9,000 members for a while now, just passively watching and seeing what these people are doing. And I have to tell you, these people are fucking lunatics. Not even kidding, they're lunatics. They're absolutely fucking crazy. It's not just because they're treating themselves, but they're also treating their family members, they're convincing their very sick uh, fathers and mothers, their grandma, their grandpa, to burn holes into their body because they have diagnosed them themselves as having some condition that requires it. And it's not just that. They also do this to their dogs. That's right. Somebody's getting the great idea that, oh, my dog has a tumor. I'll just burn a hole into its body with this black paste. And so this is, this is just one of the most magnificent examples of people buying into something so wildly harmful because of stupid reasons, because of, of, of extremely selfish reasons, because they think that they understand something better than other people, um, that they somehow possess this forbidden knowledge that the medical industry doesn't want you to know. So sit right back, relax, and let Uncle Jeff take you on a ride through dumb shit town to witness all the fuckery. Now our first stop is going to be at the Bloodroot Salve discussion group here on Facebook. And this is probably the biggest source of information that I've found, and most of the pictures are going to be coming from the people who have shared their stories with this group. And so let's take a quick look at the description for this group. All members must scroll and read. This is a group for discussion of Bloodroot Salve, the herbal skin treatment for lesions, warts, and moles, etc. Related posts on alternative medicine are also welcome. Admin are managers of Zenith Herbal who make up Bloodroot products and also manage BloodrootSalve.com, an information site where you will find most answers. Now looking over this website, it's kind of a repository of different stuff, uh, basically on how you're supposed to be using Bloodroot, etc, etc, etc. But what I'm really interested, before we get into any of that, is who exactly runs this site? Well, as it turns out, this site is run by a woman named Ruth D. 
and <laughs> not shockingly, she doesn't live in the United States. She lives actually in Mexico City, which is interesting because the Miracle Mineral Supplement, Carrie Rivera, uh, also lives in Mexico. Basically, finding a way to live in Mexico rather than face any kind of prosecution for promoting quackery or dangerous medical procedures. But Ruth here tells her story that in 2010, her doctor said she had skin cancer on her face. And rather than having to go through a bunch of surgery, she was advised by a naturopath to basically apply this black salve onto her face and it managed to get all of the stuff off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now what's completely crazy about this is that she frames this as, as some sort of wild discovery and then in the very same story, basically shits on anybody else trying to sell black salve because she knows how to do it safely. And now, if you'll actually look at her website, though, she has absolutely no medical and no scientific education whatsoever. She's just a random person who uses naturopathic remedy, quote unquote, and then decided to start trying to sell it. All right, so here we're going to check out the blood root salve frequently asked questions. Question one, isn't this stuff really dangerous? No, it's not dangerous, but it must be used with respect and foreknowledge. Salve is ideal for surface and small lesions. Small lesions only have a small cavity to heal over. Does it burn a hole in your body? Nah, rubbish! You should always test it first on normal skin to satisfy yourself that it will do no harm. As if somehow this is magic, magic salve that uh, will not burn or corrode normal skin. Does it work? Yes, blood root salve works. Of course it works. It's a corrosive chemical you're putting on your skin. What the fuck? How long has it been around? Physicians were using it as early as mid-1850s, which obviously means that it has to be good because, you know, we used it back when the, 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 the mortality rate was, you know, staggeringly high and most people didn't really live past 35. But, you know, is there any research? I've cited on this site studies that have demonstrated the anti-cancer properties of blood roots active chemical sanguinurine is also shown to be antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory, and anti-science, you fucking wingnut piece of shit. Researchers have recommended that sanguinarine, 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 ugh, be investigated as cancer treatment because of the way it targets only cancer cells. How does it work? A cancer can be growing away quietly and happily, just doing its thing, apparently invisible to the body's immune system. Blood root salve has an effect on the tumor that makes it suddenly visible to the immune system, so it attacks. This attack takes on the form of inflammation, redness, heat, pus, and pain. The white blood cells target the tumor and its days are numbered. Eventually, the body will eject the dead tumor. All right, let's check out instructions for using bloodroot salve. Firstly, please consider keeping a photo or video journal. It's an important way to encourage others and keep a record and proof of your treatment. You'll, you'll see what they mean when we actually get to looking at these pictures. Preparation, consult your physician or be salve practitioner. That's right. So if, if your doctor is not available, just, uh, just ask somebody on the internet. It's good to have support so people can convince you to hurt yourself. Application, apply the salve two millimeters thick over one lesion. Apply no more than 24 millimeter diameter patch. Cover with a dressing or bandaid to keep the salve in place. Reapply if the salve comes off. Leave for 24 hours. Now what drives me crazy about this is so inspection. If it's no redness or discomfort, wash it off. If it's slight redness and itching, wash it off. If there, at no point are you not supposed to wash it off, this is just silly. But here you go, there will be sustained tingling, discomfort, redness, swelling, a lump may rise under the skin, spots may rise around the area, the black salve may sink into the lesion, this is normal. Often there will be a ring around, ring of pus around the lesion, and what you're seeing now is the immune system targeting the lesion. Now that's true, if there's a bunch of pus, there's a bunch of white blood cells, that makes sense. But it's so crazy, because down here, it says, do 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 do, Check the cavity, because this is going to basically form a giant black gooey mass that will eventually fall out and there's a giant hole left in your body. If you see a patch of white tissue amongst the pink, reapply the salve. Now, anybody, anybody looking at a giant gaping wound and they see a white patch of tissue, that can be any number of different things. That can be uh, bloodless bits of tissue uh, because of problems with circulation. That could be a uh, congealed mass of white blood cells 
from trying to fight off an infection. That could be any number of different things, but this is actually encouraging you. If you see white tissue amongst this giant gaping hole you just burned into your body, you should then burn a further hole into your body. So the basic way in which this works is you have these uh, escharotic compounds, either sanguinorine or uh, zinc chloride. And this is basically mixed together with dimethyl sulfoxide, also known as DMSO. And DMSO is an organosulfur compound. And the, the main reason why it's used, what it actually does, is it allows for chemical substances to ride the DMSO through the skin and into the bloodstream. It's a way, instead of having to inject something or to ingest it, uh, or to in some way get something into the body in a traditional way, you can actually get a substance through the skin. And DMSO has been used for a lot of different things, usually just medical practices. Uh, there, there are some other industrial uses, but for the most part, it, it's pretty cut and dry. However, the alternative medicine quackery has been promoting DMSO as, as an alternative for all sorts of different things including cancer cures. There's no proof for it, no nothing. And in fact, using DMSO while trying to use other types of anti-cancer drugs, especially chemotherapy, can have a detrimental effect on any type of treatment that you're actually having. So those people who might be going in for chemotherapy and also trying to do blood root salve, they're just nullifying their ability for the chemotherapy to work whatsoever. Okay, so let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of this, uh, some of this cancer in action. Um, again, warning, these, these pictures are really fucking gross. So here we have day six after somebody has applied the blood root salve to a section of their collarbone. And they're asking, should I be cleaning the area or just keep putting coconut oil on? Somebody replies, that's a beauty. Just cover with coconut oil to keep moist. Do not apply any more salve. Let it run its course now. You may want to pop the pus bubbles to ease the pressure. Oh my god. Clean with colloidal silver if needed. And for those of you who aren't familiar, colloidal silver is uh, the the woo-woo snake oil stuff that uh, turned this motherfucker blue. Next up, we have a picture of this at day eight. Ooh, doesn't that just look delicious? It's like a reverse, it looks like a reverse Oreo. Day nine, you can see how this has basically burned a giant crater into the side of their neck. Day 10, came off with Band-Aid. Wasn't as much as I was hoping. I've heard both to salve again right away and to wait. Morning after resalving. Of course, of course they would resalve. After, after, after looking at, at how nasty and how deep that is, of course, the, the only rational, rational thing to do, of course, would be to, to stick more of this skin, this flesh-eating substance on your body. Somebody asks, how's the pain? It's pretty bad right now. Yesterday it was worse. Of course it's easier today. You've started to burn away all your nerve endings. Day two of re-salving. I've been in quite a bit of pain. No shit. More than first application. I'm not seeing a lot of change under the salve yet, except around where a little salve got on surrounding area. Do you think it would have reached more by day two of re-salving? With the amount of pain and redness, I'm a bit worried about infection. Somebody replies, a little bit on your scar too. Person number two says, don't worry about infection. It's almost unheard of. It's not something you need to worry about. Red and on fire is normal. You salved a really big amount, so you're going to get a really big reaction as well. Red and inflamed is normal. Your immune system is attacking it. The size of that, give it time. It will be working away. That's why it's red. Let it do its... Th oh my god. The only thing more painful than watching these people hurt themselves like this is their fucking grammar. Holy fucking shit. And of course, you see any red streaks in the inflamed area? No, 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 no. That's not an infection. That means it's working. And here we have a final picture of this one person's treatment, and you can see exactly how extensive the damage is done. Uh, that's, that's on the base of their throat, right above their collarbone. That's hideous. The, the amount of scarring that's going to happen because of this is ludicrous. And, and keep in mind, there is no medical reason that's apparent why this person chose to do this. So I've got another example here that I want to show you uh, a lot to show how these people who are not doctors are passing themselves as doctors to each other. In this one, somebody has a picture of their tummy. 
Can anyone explain this? There was no particular reason to solve here, except I've been having so much bloating and stomach discomfort. That's right, no discernible reason why they would do a topical medical treatment to themselves, quote unquote medical, just that they had bloating and stomach discomfort, so let's just put some burning corrosive material on our flesh. Okay, that's fine. All right, cool. I just thought I'd put some salve on while I was checking some other spots. The spots were all fine, but I woke up to my tummy looking like this and a burning slash warm sensation. Any feedback would help. Well, let's, uh, let's see. Let's see how people responded to this. Person number one, skin cancer is like rust on a car body. All you can do is treat and stop spread. All depends how you look after the body. Try internal treatments. You have loads of info available on the net. Just make your body a living hell for all the commercial travelers living off of you. Put up a good fight. Oh, Jesus. Person number three. Black salve is working like a zapper and is attracting fungi, mold, parasites, and bacteria because they are the cancer. That's right. Cancer isn't just cancer. Cancer is also mushrooms and mold and parasites and bacteria. <laughs> Person number four, reactions are not limited to cancers. It's a drawing salve. It will draw up any kind if gunk. The skin is an excretor of gunk and there's all kinds of crap trapped under the surface that the salve will draw out. Much much like a, like a butthole. Person number five, would that be inadvisable for someone with chronic Lyme and mold exposure slash toxicity? And then uh, person number four has to come back, I would strongly advise you a parasite cleanse if you haven't yet. Now, as a brief note before we move on, I actually looked at the profiles of every single one of these people. Everything on their profile was set private. None of them had any, any professional experiences listed, even just on their basic public Facebook accounts. No, there was nothing. There's no, no way in which you could even remotely think they know what they're talking about. They're, they're, these people don't even list themselves as wellness coaches or chiropractors or any of the other woo-woo bullshit. These are literally just people with their conspiracy theory accounts telling each other to hurt themselves. So we're gonna hit three more topics real quick and then we're pretty much just gonna be done with this for today. The first one that I really wanna get into though is how these people manage to actually justify this. So this person asks in the, the, the Bloodroot group, maybe a daft question, but has everyone who is salving been diagnosed with cancer? This person replies, no, the salve reacts to abnormal cells, which may be precancerous and to cancer, diagnosed or not. So the original person asks, but how do you know there are abnormal, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean? Second person says, well, it doesn't react on healthy skin. Yes, but how do you know where to salve? Well, something suspicious, of course. I have had red patches which have come and gone, subdiagnosed BCC, dry patches of skin which have returned numerous times, a raised red spot which won't heal. I treated my breast as it was sore and one armpit smelt weird. My one armpit smelt weird, so, oh my God. Once salving starts, it often leads to other areas being brought to the surface, same as taking the capsules does. And then blah, 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 asking questions. But this is a clear cut example of how, how, how ridiculous this is because they're basically saying there is no reason that you need to be diagnosed. If you put this blood root salve on your body and it, it reacts, it hurts you, it means that that spot had cancer. Now here's a physical challenge. If any of you crazy wingnut blood, blood root people out there, I want you to find the healthiest part on your body, the healthiest piece of skin that looks like it has nothing wrong with it, nothing wrong with it at all, like your knee, or or maybe like uh, your calf, or, or your shoulder, somewhere that has absolutely no blemishes, no marking, no reason that you've ever had any discomfort at all, and I want you to put some blood root on there. A good amount, like a dime-sized blood root on there, and see, see if it magically finds some fucking cancer. Because the truth of the matter is, is that escharotics don't care whether there is cancer or not. It is a basic chemical reaction, and by putting it on your flesh, you are going to make that flesh be attacked and dissolved. But here's the last two things that I really want to touch on, and what I think is so, so just hideously inappropriate about this whole movement is it's not just that they're hurting themselves, they're convincing each other to hurt themselves, or convincing each other to hurt their, their friends and family who are adults, but also this, this person posts this picture of their dog with a giant tumor. Dog with large tumor hanging under it. I put a half centimeter spot of salve on Chris, 
Crisscross the band-aids and placed it on dog's tumor next day. Band-aids fell off. Oh my god, these run-on sentences are fucking awful. You should not be doing a medical procedure if you don't know how to at least form something of a coherent fucking sentence. So anyway, the, the dog's super old. The dog's licking at it, reluctant and, and in pain and just having issues. Now, rather than take this dog to the vet, they're just trying to basically burn a hole in their old, decrepit fucking dog. Which is just... It's inhuman. It's inhuman that they would do this to an animal. But just in case, just in case you think these people couldn't be completely crazy, just in case. Oh yeah, that's right. They also do this to their fucking kids. As we come to the end of this topic, it always reminds me of all the different ways in which people are, are taken advantage of. All the ways in which somebody with a, a bright smile and a pocket full of secrets to sell uh, somehow manages to convince somebody that there is this hope or there is this secret way, this special method by which they can deliver you. I'm reminded how much these snake oil salesmen remind me of evangelicals trying to peddle faith on a street corner. Give up your objectivity, give up your doubt, give up everything else and just believe, believe in this special thing, this magic cure, and this is what's gonna set you apart. This is what will stave off the reaper and make you live so much longer. Literally burn a hole inside your body. Burn yourself away and you will be cleansed or something. I don't know. But anyway, that's the basics of the blood root aka black salve situation. Um, if you've been thinking about doing this alternative cure, don't. 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 There's no reason for it. There's, there's, there's no science behind it. There's no conceivable way in which this is actually a good idea. If you have a condition that in some way is endangering your life, like uh, skin cancer, go to a doctor. That's th They spent eight years of their life learning just how they can help you survive a condition. Some random asshole on the fucking internet who's like, no, ignore that guy. <laughs> ignore that guy. Listen to me. I'm a chiropractor from Pasadena. Fuck you. Fuck that. No. Tell them to shut up. Tell them to go fuck themselves. Go see a fucking doctor. There's no... Stop. Your life is important. So much so, I don't think you should be risking it on the maybe some anonymous guy on the internet knows some magical secret knowledge. Okay? Anyway, that's it for this video. I was going to be working predominantly on the bot review video. I'm still working on it this week, but uh, yeah, I needed, to, I needed to get this one out there. And I just, I don't know, I was missing being on camera. I needed to talk to you guys because I just, I love you so much. You're, you're wonderful. I can see you through the lens right now. I'm not even drunk yet. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you appreciate what I do, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more just like this. Share with your friends so everybody knows don't do blood root. I do have a Patreon and it's in the description. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day free of body burning, disgusting, fucked up herbal remedies. Bye. Yeah, pretty much. How does it burn your fucking face off? Mole? Oh, that's not a mole. It's cancer. I might as well burn my fucking face off. What the fuck?